Well, that's going on the outtakes. <laughs> So, Simon, thank you for having us. Not at all. Pleasure. Thank you for the beer. We've already started. Uh, pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Good help. Let's go right back to the beginning. Yeah. Are you a Devonian born and bred? Not a Devonian born and bred. Um, I was born in Chippenham in Wiltshire, so technically I'm a moonraker as such people are called. Uh, my father was in the RAF, so we moved around a great deal until I was five uh, when the family relocated to Cheshire and my father went into civil aviation with Walker Sidley in those days and had most of my formative years, I suppose, in Cheshire before migrating to Aberdeen at the age of 18 to go to university. Right. Did you ever have ambitions to be a pilot yourself? Or um, you no. Uh, a career in the forces never really crossed my mind. And I've, I think the only time in my teenage years I, I suggested it, I think my father's response was something along the lines of, what the bloody hell do you want to do a stupid thing like that for? <laughs> Probably not hysterical, sometimes hilarious, but a lot of laughter, um, which when you're growing up, you presume that your own family is like everybody else's family. Um, my father had an enormous sense of humour. Um, likewise, my mother, who thankfully is still with us and has, we have a lot of giggles together. Um, but yes, there was a lot of laughter. It was a very funny household to grow up in. Um, the best way to solve any argument was to turn it into a joke. Probably be careful what I say, but um, I don't think it was. It wasn't that evident to me in those days. Um, I, at what point she thought that was going to be how she was going to spend her life, I don't think that happened until after she was at um, uh, drama school, uh, where she'd gone to uh, to train as a drama teacher. Right. Uh, which I think at that point was for want of what else to do. Um, but uh, yeah, I, it's a cliche to say the rest is history. But things went on from there quite quickly. For Well, after having spent time here, after my parents had, had relocated down here, as well as my sister being in this part of the world, this kind of, kind of became my, my second home. Uh, but I didn't leave Aberdeen properly until sort of the late 1990s uh, and went to run a pub in Leicester. I was in Leicester for two and a bit years, and then luckily my father was um, with Fort Hill, and so I made Chagford my permanent home and uh, yeah, came down and spent some time here and eventually found myself in a pub on Dartmouth. Any specific pub? This one. This one. <laughs> um, the people, I think. I mean, obviously I live here partly because of the landscape, but the, the, the quality of life is as much about people as it is about landscape and really it's the, it's the people of this part of the world uh, that I adore so much. It's, it's an exceptionally friendly part of the world, uh, a lot of great characters about. Um, yeah, people, people's the answer. Um, as all good pubs should be, it's all walks of life, um, all backgrounds, but as all, again, as all pubs should be, it's very egalitarian. Uh, and therefore you get a great mix and therefore always some very interesting conversations are gonna take place. Not all of which you wanna be a part of. Some of them can, you know, can wind you up insensibly, but, um, uh, but nonetheless, a good cross-section, interesting conversation. I mean, Rowley, who now owns this pub, himself is a great character. Um, he enjoys the pub for the right reasons. Uh, and therefore he's very keen that, uh, that it should maintain that cross-section of people that it's, that it's always attracted. I'm not conscious of it at all. Um, I think when I first came into this trade, I recognised <laughs> 
two things. One is, I've never really thought I am actually that good at it. Um, I enjoy hosting people. Um, my mother's Scots, I grew up in a household where, you know, and my father was extremely hospitable as well. Um, so I grew up in a household where hospitality was very important. Uh, obviously my years living in Scotland, um, that was underlined. Uh, for me, that is not just comes naturally, that's kind of how I was brought up to be. Uh, remembering people's names, remembering what they drink, no, that's purely coincidental. Um, I do enjoy hosting people, as I say, it's not something that I make an effort to do. Um, but at the same time, nor do I think I'm especially good at it. I'm very flattered that you should think I am. Well, it's not just me, I think it's a lot of people, Simon. <laughs> well, thank you um, to them. Testimony to what, what you're doing here. No. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a comedic moment. No, Richard, I, mean, I can't talk about a, you like that. <laughs> a, uh, you must have had a customer complaint where you thought, my God, this person's gone completely off the rails. Or, <laughs> things have blown way out of... Oh, I mean, those happen Perception. all the time, actually. But you, you've, you've prompted one in my mind, which was in this very pub, and the geography of the bar, though, where the camera is situated at the moment, you can't actually see it. But... Um, uh, the door to outside and therefore to the garden leads away next to the bar. But there's an entrance behind the bar uh, that the staff used to to and fro through. And it was summertime. Obviously, we've got a lot of visitors in this part of the world. Sometimes, when it's very busy, you can get a bit wound up by some of them. And this particular customer had wanted the moon on a stick and asked for all sorts of things. And I was trying to reiterate, no, it's a small country bar, etc., etc. Uh, but we'll do what we can. They'd gone off back to the garden, and I turned around with my back to the door to say to a member of staff who had appeared behind the bar, and I was going, what a bunch of effing idiots, I can't believe they want this, that, and the other, and don't they realise this, that, and then I said something, I regret to say, even more detrimental about them, and I could tell from the look on the face of the person that I was speaking to, and I just said to him without turning around, they're behind me, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they just nodded and left. <laughs> well, that's one way of dealing with it. Uh, a big hole to dig out of. But, you know, a, a minor interesting story, but you prompted that into my mind. I'm sure there's plenty more if you keep prompting. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is no one pub. There's such a wealth of, of great pubs, not just on Dartmoor, but in Devon overall. Um, to you did you did say except for the ring of bells at North Bury, did you? Well, I didn't say. <laughs> They've been to the ring of bells, but, uh, which they should definitely go to because it's a great been pub. To the Sandy Park. And let's say they've been to the Sandy Park. There's one other little pub that is very small, um, very quiet. It's one of my favourite pubs in the world. Which I'm not going to mention the name of it because it is so small. When everybody flocks up there, then it kind of spoils that. So I'm going to keep that one to myself. Um, the Ruggleston Inn at Whittacombe, very special place, another small pub but very tightly run by Richard and Vicky, I know you've been there, um, simple menu, it never ceases to amaze me the, the throughput that they can get through a small pub. The other one that I'd, that is a real go-to for me, um, apologies to all the other publicans on Dartmoor that I'm not including here, uh, which is off the mall, um, is the Railway Inn at North Torton, where one just wants to go to see Bert because Bert is such a great host for the bulk. Um, fantastic food, good beer, very convivial pub. Love the place. There's probably about a dozen more, but I mean, I, I, I could talk about pubs indefinitely. Um, so I'll leave it at those two. Uh, depends on the fish. If it's haddock, probably go for fish and chips. If not, pie. Beer. Whiskey. Dogs. Why not both? <laughs> Rugby. Ten years ago, I'd have been able to say scratching, so it's got to be the crisps nowadays, I'm afraid. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a, ooh, that's unfair. Um, I have great affection for both places. I, no, I can't answer that one, Richard.
boots. Boots or caps? <laughs> You've rather confused me with that one. Fat um, cap or boot? Well, I wear both. Um, what can you do with that? Or what can you not do with that? Oh, well, the state of my hair nowadays. Um, I, I need my flat cap when I go out of doors. But one thing I can't abide, people wearing hats indoors. Out of bounds. Darts or pool? Darts. Burns night or New Year's Eve? Ooh, that's unfair. For someone who spent so long north of the border, New Year's Eve is comes before, not just um, calendar-wise. It has to be Hogmanay ahead of Burns Night, but I enjoy them both. So, thank you so much for your not time. Not at all, Richard. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. A joy getting to you a bit better. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. OK, guys, this well done. Fair. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh. Cheers, OK. <laughs> who their cousins are and what they do and possibly what they drink and hopefully what their name is and the dog's name. Very important. Mm. So, I mean, they don't call it Doggy Devon for no reason, <laughs> do they? Uh, I thought it was a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, That's flashing your headlamps. I, I, I totally agree off. with you on that, man. On that part. I, you know, I remember people's names as couples, so if I get... <laughs> Especially in Doggy Devon. <laughs> <laughs>